Welcome to the Love of Those Fuck Show with Sherry Yazzie. I am a plus size indigenous woman in a world that tells me not to love myself. I fucking do. Here's how I do it. For more on how to defuck yourself, love yourself, and my emotional resiliency magnifying, life transforming mindset hacks and self care tools that you need to know now in order to transform your life and be happy as fuck, go to belovableaf.com. That's B E L O V E. A-B-L-E-A-F dot com. Hey there, mom's in the house, right? We're going to be loving ourselves. We're going to be enjoying our goddamn lives. <laughs> uh, so today we are talking about three self-love habits. Three self-love habits. <laughs> Before I get into that, though, let me tell you a little bit about my story. So like, why would I listen to this woman? Like, what's her deal? Because I'm not, um, I don't have like the PhD. I didn't get the big long degrees or anything like that. Literally, <laughs> I went from hating myself to loving myself. Didn't even know it was possible. And that is what I want to help other women do. Other moms, right? We have shit here, shit to do, messages to spread, kids to raise, and we need to have an amazing support system, an amazing place for us to be, to live our lives, to enjoy ourselves. And if that's you, like, yeah, you're in the right spot. Okay, so about me, um, I am a child of an alcoholic. I have spent most of my life in relationships with um, some kind of addict or another. And when I had met my husband, which we've actually been together for um, 22 years, 22 years, gonna be coming up on 23 I believe <laughs> um I was like oh my god I finally found a man who's like not an addict Woo! good go go Sherry go you and then later I did find out he was one <laughs> um, and we will get into that uh later that's like another story for another time but um in that right in 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 being raised in those environments right when you're around an addict you know, everything is about their disease. Everything is about them. You're very, it's so easy to like just not ever focus on you to, you never ask the question, what do I want? How do I want this to go? How would I like my life to look? You're always over there helping them. You're always um, focused on them because if they're okay, you're okay. But how hard is it to make an addict okay? Because you have no control if they are or not. None. <laughs> And you don't have to have addicts, but literally anybody that you're trying to like have them feel okay is really a losing proposition because people choose how they feel. They're the only ones who can affect the change of how they feel. They're the only ones who can make the choices of how they feel. And so this was a rough go for me because I am naturally a helper. I am naturally somebody who wants to get in there and help people. And so and my story was so much about me living over there outside of myself, trying to help my partner, my my son. And again, not to say that we don't help our children and that we don't help our partners, but it's different when your entire focus is over there. And every time you're back over here with you, it's like, oh, I hate myself. And oh my God, I gained five pounds. And oh, you know, I can't believe I said that to her. And oh, and it was like, it was such an ugly place in my mind. Nothing was ever good enough. I was never good enough. Um, I was never showing up the way that I thought I needed to be. I was not being a good enough mom. Oh my gosh, let's get going on good enough, right? Not good enough here, not good enough there. It's like the opposite of a Dr. Seuss book. Not good enough anywhere. <laughs> that was how I was showing up. And um, it was draining. You can imagine if you feel like nothing you ever do is going to be good enough. And if you're relating to this, cool, you're in the right place. Um, now, if you feel like nothing you do is ever going to be good enough, it is super hard to do things. It's why you feel exhausted. It's why your energy is fucking shit. It's why things feel like walking through the mud. Um, it's when we start to really shift it that things, something else is possible. When we maybe think, okay, I'm not gonna say that anymore. I'm not gonna think that anymore. I'm not gonna decide that anymore. Um, what if what you do, everything you do is good enough? 
What if it's enough? What if it just is? What if you're pretty enough? What if you're smart enough? <laughs> like for the things that you want in your life, because you weren't designed on accident. You were designed very much on purpose. Uh, see, I switched over here. Now I'm preaching and not talking about myself. Weird. <laughs> but you were designed very much on purpose. The desires that you have in your heart are meant to lead you to what it is you want. You are equipped to do the things that you're here to do. If you wanted to be a mom and you're a mom now, you're equipped to do that. You are, it's not as if you don't have the divine support of the universe, of a higher power, of maybe your ancestors, if you think like that, of maybe your business calling you forward, of your family. There's so much support available for you. And, 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 and it's it's meant to like you're meant to be here your life is on purpose right so you are fully equipped to do what it is you want to do in your life okay rant done um so i you know as far as my journey right i mean i talked about it uh never good enough all of that um continue like always feeling like i wasn't the um like I wasn't lovable, like who would stay with me? Everybody was going to abandon me. Everybody was going to leave me. Friends, lovers, partners, right? Like there was never going to be anybody who just stuck it out because I wasn't okay, because I knew I wasn't okay, because I struggled literally just being inside my body, just spending time inside my head. I, and, and I obsessed, right? I obsessed over every woman my husband looked at, over every um, thing he said, everything he did, because I wasn't okay over here. So I very much needed him to make me okay. How much pressure is that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was a very hard um, pattern that we did for a lot of years. And if, you're, if you recognize yourself in any of this, it's okay. It can change. It can shift. It doesn't have to be that way. And I'm still with the same man. So that's one of the things that I like about my journey. Because sometimes you, it's like you find these women who are like, yeah, I love myself and I'm so empowered now. Oh, yeah, well, I had to get divorced and now I have a new man who treats me really great. But what if your old man <laughs> can shift with you as well? So that's just something to think of. Um, for me, uh actually when i was smaller like i hated my body i you know what i mean it was like i remember i wore a string bikini and i was so disgusted by myself i was so disgusted by my belly i didn't want my husband to even touch my stomach i mean like it was like a whole thing it was i spent so much of my time so much of my days worrying about how i looked how i was showing up out like um Oh my gosh, trying to get it all perfect and never feeling like that, right? Because I wasn't a blonde, skinny cheerleader. And that's what I was going for in my head all the time. <laughs> and you guys on the podcast, you're like, uh, you were a brown plus size one. Because even back then I was a size 14, right? <laughs> so it's like, if someone like me, right, can come through this and on the other side to find a way to love herself unequivocally for real unconditionally like it's possible for you i am a plus size woman i'm like uh bigger than i was when i hated myself and now i love myself i love me i love my body i love my belly i'm grateful <laughs> i love myself and um and it didn't just like happen overnight right it's not just a snap and boom oh my gosh I woke up and now I love myself. No, it's a process. But in doing that, what has happened? I've created a relationship with my husband that feels amazing, that I'm excited to be in, that is supportive, that is, it's still real. It doesn't mean, you know, we don't argue. It doesn't mean some days aren't the best. But overall, the love that I craved from him once I started actually giving it to myself, it was like a miracle. He showed up and gave it to me as well. And my friends show up and give it to me. And my, my child shows up and gives that to me. And I'm not saying that you... So some people teach like, okay, well, if you want to be loved, you need to love yourself or you can't like have it. But that's, that's not... I don't believe it like that. But I do believe if you don't love you, you're going to sabotage the shit out of people who love you. 
So I'll say that again. If you don't love you, you're going to sabotage the shit out of the people who do love you. Um, I know somebody who their mom didn't love themselves. And as a boy, of course, he loved his mom. He thought she was great. But she never let it in. And it confused him as a child. And so then you get a lot of these men who grow up and they don't even understand how to love a person. Because when they were giving fully their unconditional love, it was shut down. It was not accepted, and it's confusing for a kid. It's it's a weird way, and maybe this could be for women too. I mean, definitely, if we watched our moms, you know, obsess, talk about how fat they were, like all of that. I mean, I was an adult. I mean, like legit. Like I was in my mid twenties before I realized my mom wasn't fat, because she always had said she was. And, and here's the kicker. I was always a bigger size than her. Like, literally, we were the same size when I was in second grade. <laughs> okay? So I was always a bigger size than her. And she always said she was fat. So, of course, I just thought I was. Of course I was. You know, like, that's just who I am. And fat was, like, the worst thing you could be. Um, and honestly, like, now, I mean, I'm very plus-sized. But I don't really think of myself as fat because, to me, all that has the, all that negative connotations to it. But I'm clear. I'm a big woman. Like, I have the belly. I have the jiggles. <laughs> and it's possible to have that and love yourself. And I'm not at all claiming, like, that you don't... I still take care of myself. I drink smoothies. I watch what I eat. No, why? Not because I'm like, oh, oh, I'm... I got to lose the weight. I got uh, like, oh, when I gave up that, it was the most liberating feeling. I can actually like focus on things I want to do rather than <laughs> counting the calories and weighing the food and all that stuff, right? When I gave all that up, it <laughs> literally I had extra hours in my day. It was amazing. <laughs> and that's, again, you can love yourself and want to lose weight, right? Because, but it's a different thing. You're not wanting to lose weight because you need some outside validation because you need something you already have it so if you're choosing to get your body in shape because you love your body and you want it to feel good then that's one thing so i eat so that my body feels good um like i said the green smoothies and i do like intermittent fasting but again these are things that i do because i love them because i i've never loved breakfast when i someone told me i could intermittent fast i was like oh, hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> and People who preach like, okay, love yourself so you can lose the weight. I don't believe that either. I really feel like when you really start loving yourself, you will take good care of you because this beautiful body is what ports your amazing soul around the world. <laughs> you want your body, I want my body to have energy, to be able to dance and move and present and speak and have all the things and, and have a great uh, like sex life, have a wonderful um, like you know ability to play with my kids and I only have the one, but play with my kid. And <laughs> like, I want to have those, those things in my life. And so I'm choosing them separately. Okay. Another tangent. Woo. Hope you guys can follow me along. So simple story. I went from hating myself, obsessing all the time. It was a five year journey, right? Because I realized right around when my son was eight, that if I kept on, showing him that kind of pretend happy faking it um was the thing that i was the one that was going to fuck up his light he came into this world with this beautiful bright shining light and maybe you can uh, relate maybe your kids have that too right i'm sure they all do <laughs> i believe we all do we just learn to cover it up <laughs> Um, and I was like, no, I don't ever want him to cover his up. I want him to shine it and I'm going to protect it. That was my mission from when he came into the world. It was like, I'm protecting this beautiful light in the world. And I have. I took it very seriously, like all the things. And then I realized that our kids, my child, he, he models who I am. He... He, I'm like the blueprint for him, right? He'll live his own life. He'll make his own choices and he'll be his own person. But I'm the thing that he's watching. I'm the person he's watching to model. I'm the person that he's looking at to see how I handle things, how I do things. And I was like, oh man, I am showing him this kind of fake, happy half-life shit. And that's got to stop because I you know, drew this line of like, okay, the trauma that happened to me, 
I and thankfully I my parents drew the line as well so some of their trauma didn't come to me some of it did it was like okay even more so <laughs> I'm drawing the line trauma's not passing me nope <laughs> my kid's safe right um so having that and then realizing great I did all that work for that I've done a lot of healing, I've done a lot of therapy, I mean like all kinds of things, okay cool, but you're still miserable, you still don't feel happy, you're still struggling to get out of bed. Is that what you wanna be modeling? Is that what you wanna be showing? It was a big fat fucking no. So I'm like okay, um, let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be happy, it was a decision. I'm like I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna figure out a way. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna do it. And I wasn't positive it was even possible. And then on the journey, I did all different kinds of modalities, <laughs> um, EMDR, group therapy, um, retreats, uh, you know, like Tony Robbins. Um, I did um, uh, all kinds of, I, you know, books and um, journaling courses and all kinds of courses. <laughs> I did so many things looking for this. And I'm really happy to say it did take quite a while, but between all of it, all of the things, all of the money I spent, all the time I took, I was able to figure out a very like concise way, in my opinion, to move your happiness set points, to move your set points. Everybody has set points. So we all have a set point that, um, you know, like we have an energy set point, we have a money set point, we have a relationship set point, we have a happiness set point. We all have these kind of normals for us. So sometimes it's good and sometimes it's, it's like not as good, but we have a set point that we don't really dip below. So let me explain it in terms of like money. So let's think about, there are people who are like, I always have $500 in my account no matter what, and that's their set point. They might dip below 500 for a moment, but they put it back up. Sometimes somebody's money set point might be like, they are three months late on rent, but they never get more than three months late on rent because they don't want to get evicted. Like that's their set point. So it's about boosting your set point, right? So you can do it in anything. But what I did is I started moving my happiness set point up. I started to feel better. And then as I started to feel better, something else was available. I started to kind of down this path of how do I love myself? How, how can I start loving myself? And I found that was beliefs. So the way that my stuff works is there's the set points, there's beliefs, and there's practice. So the way that I talk about it, so these are the three self-love habits, and then I'll finish my story in just a second. <laughs> One, devote. So get clear on you know what it is you want, how you want it to go, how you want to feel, um, and that you're worthy of taking the time, effort, and energy to work on this, that this is the stuff. Any, this will beat any strategy hands down no matter what all the time. Whether it's in making money, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in being a parent, this loving yourself and finding a way for you to be happy and show up will beat any strategy, any time, any education around it all the time. Because the thing is, what we bring to things with our energy, that's the key. How we really truly feel about ourselves is all the time working out in the world to bring us what it is we want or don't want. When I started to love myself, it was the first time my income ever finally like evened out because I was finally worthy of consistency. Oh, right? <laughs> so there's so much available for us when we start to do this work. Um, but without deciding, that this is for us, right? And that we're worthy of it, really getting clear on what it is we want. And then then the next step for me is beliefs. Always, always our beliefs are the fundamentals. It's the thing that our beliefs are always being reinforced again and again and again and again all the time by everything out there. Our brains are showing it to us. It's Our brains are looking for evidence for our beliefs all the time. And these aren't our conscious beliefs. These are our subconscious beliefs. These are the ones that live underneath, right? Sometimes we're dragging around behind us and they're fucking us up. So like for me, not being lovable, I was sabotaging my relationship consistently all the time. I was causing drama and fights all the time because I wasn't lovable and I needed to know that I wasn't lovable. Um, when I was younger, I mean like 
I took it to much bigger extremes, running away, <laughs> you know, stealing cars, that kind of thing. So it's it doesn't have to be that way, though. Once you understand that your beliefs are actually shaping how people show up for you, the kind of money that you make, the how your life is going, the house you live in, you, the best news is, is you get to choose your beliefs. Now, it does take some time to take your conscious beliefs, the one that you, see, that you want to believe, and move them into your subconscious because your subconscious mind is getting what it wants all the time. And it got that programming from you. But guess what? Most of us, our programming, when we really look at it, it's like, oh. <laughs> so the belief work is next. So that's devote. And then unleash. This is, you're started, you're moving through this, you're feeling great, and you are going to unlock the power of you. You're going to up-level your set points like we just talked about. This is the part where you step into you. And you stepping into you is for your kids. It is for your relationships. It is for the world. The great, the like, the um, benefit of the entire world is you stepping into what lights you on up, what gets you fired up. You loving you... Again, we'll do more for your kids than anything else. I'm, I'm standing by it, right? Your kids need to be fed. They need to be watered. <laughs> and they need to be loved. And they need to see that you love you. Like, literally, those are the most important keys to raising a kid. The rest of it, it comes, right? When you're in this great place, it comes. The answers show up. The things that you need to do. Um, so unleash and then honor. Okay, this is where we start raising our boundary or, you know, creating our boundaries, raising our set points, really honoring who we are and practicing this. So if you guys have been following along, that's the duh method. Devote, unleash, and honor. Duh is in, of course, you're lovable as fuck and worthy of happiness. <laughs> Those are my three self-love habits. So working on really devoting some time to you and, and your beliefs Two, unleashing, letting yourself out of the damn box, being who you want to be, raising those set points, deciding what it is you want. And then three, honoring you, honoring your boundaries, raising your standards. And of course, my framework is much more in depth, but that's just a little tidbit. So doing all of that, what happened in my life? Well, I made more money. <laughs> I live in a much nicer house. <laughs> You're like, okay, cool. But no, really, my son is this beautiful, he's a teenager now, and he's this beautiful bright light still. Um, I really feel proud of the modeling that I'm creating, of the person that I'm being, of the person I'm showing him, of what it is to be like to, uh, for me to be in the world. I feel super good. And I guess this is the biggest change. It's in here. <laughs> In here used to be so miserable, right? Crying in the closet, crying in the shower. I don't do that anymore. Now, that's not to say, I, I, I mean, stuff happens, right? I mean, I lost my uncle in 2019 and it still is sad. Sometimes I still cry, but it's not this, le so grief is one thing. Grief happens, things happen, but it's not the, I just don't live in the misery that I used to live in. I used to just live in it. It was where I knew how to be. And I wake up now with my husband's arms wrapped around me and I can feel how much he loves me. And I wake up feeling like, yes, we do family cuddles. <laughs> like, I love my fucking life. And to go from waking up scared every single day of my life to waking up to this like, oh my gosh, this is so wonderful and beautiful and how grateful and I'm amazed and this is wonderful, like, is great. And do I get pissed? Do things still happen? Yes, yes, yes. But my set point is different. That's the thing. My energy, oh my hell. I used to like, literally, if you were picking me out of like a group, you know, like Winnie the Pooh, I was Eeyore every day, all day. <laughs> and now I'm like Tigger. <laughs> and I don't even drink caffeinated coffee, okay? <laughs> so, um, more energy, right? And loving my body, taking good care of me because I love me, right? Um, having fun, 
That's a huge one for me. I'm not lost in the whole obsessing thing. I can actually enjoy vacations. I wear my swimsuit, my two-piece, and I don't give a fuck and I have a good time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's starting to make those shifts. So for me, it it's, I mean, you can see some of the things on the outside, right? The more money, the nicer house, the husband who... Um, really shows up for me consistently, loves me, and so much so that he's showing up for him now, right? Because he watched me do it. And and what that's allowed, this beautiful new connection in our relationship and this beautiful connection that I have with my son. And the fact that I get to be here, that I'm actually talking about this stuff, the thing that makes the most difference, it made the most difference in my life, continues to make the most difference in my life, I'm literally talking to you guys right now. This is like... A dream okay so so many things people talk about living the dream all the time but it can be real you can choose I travel well before COVID I traveled a lot and I'm going to be traveling again afterwards right um, but I have the time to enjoy myself enjoy my life and create the things that I want I spend time with my son, I spend time with my husband, I have a good time, even in the midst of all the stress and things that have been happening through 2020 and start of 2021, I'm still here, I'm still using my voice, I am still um, in here, <laughs> all right, does that make sense, like in my brain, all right, I'm okay, which was not the case for so many years, so that's, I don't know, I don't, I, like I don't even know if that's inspirational, you guys, because it's real life. Shit still happens, right? Stress still happens. But when you come at it with a new set point with different beliefs, then the whole world starts lining up to tell you that you're lovable. Literally, peep everybody, like my chiropractor, my massage therapist, my energy worker, the woman who runs my ads, they all tell me that they love me. Because I love me so much so they can't even help it. <laughs> and the people that don't, the people, because some people won't. Let's get real. Some people will be so repelled by your bright, beautiful light, by you turning it on and shining, un shining it unashamedly, that they will run. And that's okay too. That And I, I'll be real though, it, that can be painful. But it's all right. Because you deserve it. The world deserves you lit up. Your kids deserve you lit up, excited and ready for your, like, you know, like, for your real raw essence out in the world with the rest of us. Like, that's what your kids want. That's what the world needs. So the three love self habits, right? So start devoting some time to you. Unleash, unlock, find ways to get out there and use your voice. And three, honor. So practice your boundaries. Practice the communication. It, none of this shit has to be perfect. Just keep practicing. And remember, duh, as in, of course you're lovable as fuck and worthy of happiness. <laughs> That's all for today. In case nobody has told you yet today, you are lovable as fuck just the way you are. To send me your questions or stories, email me at lovableafshow at gmail.com. If you love the show, please comment, like, and subscribe if you're on YouTube. And if you're listening on the podcast, please leave a review and subscribe to help me get this show in front of more women who need to know that they are lovable as fuck just as they are. Check out the show notes or go to lo belovableaf.com. That's B E L O V E A B L E A F.com. For more of how to unfuck yourself, love yourself, and be happy no matter your size. I said it before and I will say it again. You are lovable as fuck just as you are. <laughs>